In my spring 2017 video, I said that Clockwork Planet was unwatchable. I still stand by this, but I want to go into much more detail. I'm only going to cover episodes 1 through 4 because I think that's enough to cover in a whole video. It's the first entire arc, and there's more than enough to talk about. It starts off with a disconnected fight scene to catch your attention. However, it's so cliche and boring that it does the opposite. She does a fast attack and all the robots explode. The first episode's already a cluttered mess, and this only works against it. Our main character is Naoto, a high school student who loves clocks and wants to be in the Meister's Guild that fixes all the clockwork in the planet. Too bad he can't even fix a clock. This story's already falling apart. I read the first chapter of the light novel, and he's good at fixing clocks. I don't understand why they would change that. Anyway... A box falls through his ceiling, and when he opens it up, there's a girl inside. He decides that he's going to fix her, even though... He also mentions that his house is going to fall apart in three hours, giving him a time limit. Why was his house going to fall apart? Because it makes it more dramatic if there's a time limit? Due to his amazing hearing, he's able to find the one screw that needs turning and fixes her. I can't believe fixing robots is that easy. She wakes up just in time to save him from his collapsing house, which they show three separate times and it looks different every time. How many people died from that? He then tells her he was able to count the four billion gears in her based only on his hearing, and she decides that he's the best clocksmith on the planet. So she sucks on his finger. She mentions the next day that the Meister's Guild was unable to fix her for 206 years. They must really be the best if they couldn't find a single screw that needed to be tightened. We then get this awful scene where they go shopping to buy clothes for her. The only purpose of which is so that we can have him fall on her and grab her anime titty. <laughs> She then follows him to school and says, Ryuzu is an awful character. She makes no sense and her personality is all over the place. She constantly makes sexual jokes that miss their mark by a mile. She acts jealous when Naoto looks at other machines, even though he tells her he doesn't think of her as a machine. <laughs> over here where the actual plot's going on, we have Mari. She's in the powerful Brege family that makes robots, er, automatons. She learns that the government's going to purge the Kyoto district by dropping the gear that Kyoto resides on. We'll get into why that makes no sense later. The guild workers say at this point that the purge is commencing. I thought that meant the gear would drop, but that's going to happen a couple more times, so I guess it's more complex than that. Mari throws a shoe in a really tight space. Mari does some stupid movements to fix some problem, while her automaton partner, Halter, does some sick fighting. Halter mentions that there's another family named Vacheron. We also get to see a really well-animated scene of robots falling off a ledge. Hope none of them fell into any gears, then they'd have to go fix those too. God, Mari's outfit is ugly without a jacket. This is the first time we see the short-lived Chrono Compass. Mari learns that the guild is working with the military to purge Kyoto, and gets angry enough to punch a bunch of metal. After that, Mari and Naoto meet and lead us into the next episode. They talk some more about how amazing Naoto's hearing is, and she asks for his help. He doesn't agree until Ryuzu mentions that her little sister's in the tower that Mari needs to go fix. On the way to the tower, Mari says that she doesn't want to barge in or it could cause a rift between the guild and the military. Which is weird because she already knows that they're working together for evil purposes. Naoto debates her for a long time and she changes her mind. <laughs> Just kidding. They fight their way through a parking garage, and Mari pretends that she died, even though they destroyed all the robots, and they don't even fake a corpse. 
What does the Chrono Compass do? Is it for troubleshooting? Is it a badge? She says she doesn't need it anymore because she has him, so it must be for finding issues with mechanisms, but we only ever see her using it as a clock. She records a call to prove that the military and Vacheron are working together, and they drive to the tower where the problem gears are. While driving to it, a missile is shot at them, and they barely avoid it thanks to Ryuzu. This missile is the most offensive thing in the show. It has two gears around it. First, I thought, oh, that's cool, maybe they'll explain how they use the gears to propel a shell out of the barrel instead of using gunpowder. Then I noticed that the gears are turning two separate ways, so it's purely to look cool. They decide that the robots are too strong for them before Ryuzu uses her imaginary gear to move super fast and destroy all the robots in a second. So cool. They throw some science theories in to try and make it sound cooler. <laughs> Naoto is worried that Ryuzu died before he notices that her gears are... out of energy? I guess gears are self-powered in this world? Or not. Why didn't he have to do this when he fixed her? Anyways, we get an emotional moment. I won't even comment on it, just watch. <laughs> Once that fantastic scene ends, we're finally in the tower where we can fix the gear. Naoto uses his hearing to point out the problems and they fix them. Can we talk about his headphones for a minute? No one thinks they're weird. What do they plug into though? No one has a phone or music player. Mari had had her compass, but it sure didn't look like it played music. When she made a phone call, it was an old phone with a thicker plug than regular headphones. Also, why doesn't he cut the cord off? If he was pretending to hide the fact that they're not plugged into anything, couldn't he just say that they're cordless? Then the animators wouldn't have to make the cord vanish. When Naoto finds the gears that need repairing, Mari asks him to point them out on a blueprint, and he says, It makes sense, and would be a real problem, but they glance over it. Then we get to see Mari and Ryuzu working to fix the gears, and it's hilarious. <laughs> oh no! The purge is starting. Again. They also decide for the third time not to tell anyone about the purge. Mari decides that they could reverse the purge with Ryuzu's imaginary gear, and Ryuzu takes it out in the most dramatic way she could think of. <laughs> then the purge starts again, but this time it isn't working. Mari starts reversing gravity while the military sends in robots to stop them. One of the clocksmiths decides breaking gears is the right way to destroy the robots. Naoto is worried that Ryuzu's heart's going to break, and we see a heartfelt montage of their moments together. He then grabs the heart, and it looks painful, but he's fine when he's fixing her. Then she's fixed, and everyone's okay. Whew, that was an entire series in four episodes. This show is garbage. The plot makes no sense, the characters are inconsistent, the comedy is just so off that it makes me groan. And we don't know what half of the things we see are. Just look at the military's plan. There's something in the Kyoto Grid that they ignored until it started causing serious problems. To cover up that they didn't fix it, they decided to drop the gear and say it was a disaster. When Mari comes in and says she can fix it, they try to make her stop and let her go. 
why didn't they just let her fix it? Was it because she could tell the people their plan after they fixed it? She could do that any time after they let her walk away. If her family is influential enough to make the army collapse, then they probably shouldn't reveal their plan to her. Then he says to take her alive, but they would benefit a whole lot more from killing her and letting it look like she died in the purge. On the other side, we have the Meister's Guild turning down every chance they get to warn people or expose the military's plan. Overall, I must say I'm glad Gears are making a rise in anime aesthetics. It's really making it easy to know what shows to avoid.